Um, today, I'm excited to get to introduce you to Dusty McCartney. And Dusty joins us from Ada, Oklahoma, where she is a sixth grade uh, STEM slash ag slash science teacher and also English language arts. So Dusty just kind of does it all. I've been in her classroom. Her students love her. They um, are engaged and uh, interacting with her and um, she just does a great job. I've picked up on one of her uh, terms that she uses with her students and that is um, they're going to do some activities. And so I'm sure today she's going to share many activities with us. So Dusty, I'm going to let you take it away. Hello, everybody. I checked in the chat and it looks like you're like me. This virtual stuff is new and we're learning to use it as we go. So let's, I want to show you some of that and what we've been doing here. So a little bit about me, just even this slide has changed. As you know, we're in this ever changing world. Um, I'm actually not teaching ELA this year. I'm going to teach all science and STEM, which is exciting because I can fit a lot of ag activities in there. Um, so that's changed and I've got to go back and change this whole thing. Um, I teach sixth grade and it's here in Ada where we don't have a lot of farming area around. We consider ourselves not an agriculture school. We let the schools around us kind of deal with agriculture and let our kids go. So I'm trying to put that back into our system as much as I can. This is one of my favorite lessons to use with my sixth graders to start getting them interested. And you can go to this site. I'm going to click here and let you see what these ag lessons look like. This seems pretty low level, but my sixth graders don't know anything other than their, what cows look like. They don't have a lot of background. So this starts building that for them. And it gives them some lessons down here. This is my favorite to use with ELA. And if you look, it has the standards over here, which is super helpful when you go to write those lesson plans. It has all of this wonderful information. It's right there for you. This paragraph here is the one that always gets them. I can start reading the book to them, it's not a big deal, but when they start looking at how much the cow weighed and how big the door in the silo actually was, that's when we discover our STEM project. And when we look at our STEM project, they have to identify a problem. And their problem is how do we get Grady out of that silo? So I show them, we have, we started small. I started really small with like a, oatmeal container for our silo and it's gotten bigger as I got this nice paper roll and we have this paper roll and you can see poor Grady is now stuck inside and they have to figure out how to get him out. So you can see, back into sharing, You can see on the table here where one of my students, I have them first draw, just draw how we're gonna get Grady out. And you see poor Grady kind of dangling on this rope inside the silo. And then they go around the room to each others and they tell what the problems are gonna be before they have to redesign. And you can see that she says she could get stuck or hit her head on the side of the silo. It's a serious problem. She could get scared, another problem. So this is a huge, intro to make them start caring and it starts with just reading that young adult lower level book to these sixth graders and they i stop about halfway through before they start trying to find the problem and they just they can't stand it they have to know how it was solved dusty yes. let me i'm going to interrupt you for just a minute that yeah. cool silo um that you had with the cow's head sticking out what was that made of again somebody was asking it's a recycled paper tube. They, there's a paper company in Oklahoma City that has a day at the beginning, end of July, beginning of August, and they just give all that stuff away. And they're perfect. It's just a perfect demonstration size. That's awesome. You might have to share the name of that company with us. I will. I will, I will look it up. let everyone know. I will look it up and get it to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. 
So, but definitely don't, when you go in to look at the lessons, definitely don't discount the lesson because it's lower level, because there's so many things you can do with STEM to bring that to your kids and they are truly interested in anything that they can start building. This is the first, we love, love this resource, this engineering process resource. And we, this is a problem that came to us. We have three pecan trees on our playground. How they got here, they've just been here forever. Um, I'm sure the school was built around them. The principal hates them because the kids pick the nuts up and they throw them. So the kid, he told them they couldn't touch the pecans anymore. So my kids started asking questions. What can we do? How can we get the pecans picked up? We, whoop, we pulled this lesson because if we're going to deal with it, we're going we're gonna to learn about it. And once again, we have these cool standards over here. And then it gives us some information about pecans. And they went super in depth with this pecan thing. They wanted to know what kind of pecans we had. They wanted to know what, why there's some of them weren't good, what was wrong with our pecans, how we could make them better for next year. They started researching the history. The, it, was, it was one of the most interesting things I had. I mean, they truly, because it was on their own turf, they thought it was super important. So they took this and they took this resource and they started, they identified the problem. Their problem was they wanted to pick them up. So I created this They were a STEM class and they wanted to use their Chromebooks as much as possible. So they took the Google slide so they could run it. Dusty. Dusty. Yeah. For some reason, your um, voice is cutting in and out right now and it wasn't earlier. Okay. Let so me... I'm not sure. Maybe just talk a little bit slower and let it catch up with you or something like that. Okay. Can do. Tend to go fast. So in this document, I just added in text boxes so that now we're not using up all the paper because they like to draw and then they mess up and they can get rid of that. And this, the first problem they identified with our pecans is they wanted to pick them up and they wanted to pick up just the pecans. So they went and they found all these amazing shakers which is, that's not a reality for our playground. And then they found that we looked at all the farming stores, we have two in town, and they went there and they checked and they saw that there were some of the pecan picker uppers, the traditional, you know, you roll it or the ones that you kind of grab. And they started creating. They started building what they, just what we had our supplies in our STEM lab, they started building pecan picker uppers and this was, I think, the principal's favorite activity we did all year because we cleared the playground. We picked up every pecan using small things they built. And I wish I had pictures, but I think the day that we were picking up was a day that was an observation day, and I don't think I was taking pictures. But I have linked both of these so that when you get the PowerPoint, you can just click them and they're there to use. Now we're going to take a little bit of a break and let you do a little STEM before we look at this lesson. And this is the way I present it to my kids. Ada is super big in aviation right now, and I wanted to link it to agriculture because that's my favorite part of teaching it. So I give the kids very simple supplies and I put them out and they pick. And so the materials, if you have them, if you're there at home and you can do it, if you can just find something around you, um, paper, any kind of paper, cardstock, cardboard, anything, a rubber band, paper clip, straw and tape. I tell them that they need to build me a plane that we're gonna test. I don't give them any further instructions. I tell them they can use all of the materials or as few of the materials as they need. So I'm gonna give you some time to build and just about six minutes. And then if you have any questions while that's going on, I'm love to answer them. Dusty, while they're building their airplanes, can you tell me about some of the things that you do in your classroom, maybe that you're not going to talk about um, if there's 
any activities that you do that, that you're not including today that you could um, talk to them about while they're building their planes? Absolutely. Put you on the spot. Hey, um, that's, there were so many, there's so many great things. Um, we love, we, the, where we have somebody come in and read to us. We had the superintendent come in and read the Temple Grandin book and the kids were amazed. He was amazed. He hadn't read the book before he came in and just dry read it. And then he wanted to stay because they started building their cattle shoots. Um, we, we spend lots of time playing with pumpkins. We love pumpkins October time, building our pumpkin catapults that gets us in a lot of trouble. We're always looking. The parents are really great once they start seeing how involved we are to send things. And a lot of things just come up out of the blue because it's what we have on hand. So it, it's amazing just to go to the site and say, hey, we need to learn about apples and we can pull up a lesson on apples and we're good to go. Okay, and if anyone is um, making an airplane, if you'll use the raise your hand feature, then I will let you share your airplane for just a little bit. So I can bring you in as a panelist long enough to show us your airplane, and then I can send you back to an attendee. So just click the raise your hand if you've been building. And Dusty, I think they're all being shy and no one wants to share their airplanes. So I guess you can keep moving on. Tell them what you do with your airplanes once your students get them built. We will do that. Okay, so let me, I want to stop share so I can show you. So the lesson has this amazing airplane with the circles, and I will show that to you here in a minute, the O planes, and this amazes them. I had a group of ELL students a couple of years ago that built these in so many shapes and sizes. And these fly super well, and they're shocked because most of the time when they build the planes, they're just going to build the triangle shape, fold it up, and they're done. So this is, this is something that reaches all of them, and they love it. Then a group of boys last year created this thing. And it's a straw. It's kind of folded. It has a rubber band. And this became where I had to ban them. They couldn't take it on the playground. They launch super well. And it, if you heard it, it's sharp, it hits things. But they're really motivated to make things that beat the others. If I give them a challenge to make sure it goes farther, we'll do that. See if I can. We look at this lesson. There again, those standards for all different subjects. It even gives you the list, a simple, simple list of things you can use. We use whatever we have. I send a list time at the beginning of the year of things we might use for STEM, and parents kind of just send things. Sometimes a kid will show up with a whole bag of plastic bottles. It's just anything we think we might use. You see, there's some really good things in here to use for math. This lesson has a little bit of everything. Getting it down to the plane. There's some aviation math, math for sixth and seventh grade. And then we get down here to the trials. It tells them to make a list of modifications to a regular paper airplane to make it go farther and list those modifications, then to choose one. It walks them through the independent, the dependent variable, what a hypothesis is. And this is great because they forget those words. It's good to go back and remind them. Here's this data table to keep track of all that. We go outside, we lay out the tape measures. We, we work all this, all this. And then here's the simple paper airplane. And then their favorite is this O-wings that they really enjoy modifying, making it they change the measurements, the five strips. They change this, they make them smaller, they change the straws. Some of them tried it with a pencil to see if that would affect anything. 
and they can modify. I let them modify here as sixth graders. So one of my favorites. And here's another, this is a newer lesson from the National Ag in the Classroom site that I am very, very excited to use, especially with this whole online learning world we're kind of in now. Um, so this lesson looks a little different because it's, it's on the national site, but it's similar. You can find the same information and it walks you through exactly what you need. And I'm, I've got this one already prepared, ready to go to load into. It's one of my lessons to start with. Um, so it goes through project-based learning, which is very important to me. I think that's the way my kids learn best in STEM. And it walks through every little thing. It gives you the credits. It gives you the outcomes. But up here, it has your essential files. And this is the one we're gonna look at. It tells what you need on their teams, business team members. This will let them work in groups, even in Google Classroom, they can work in groups. And um, what roles they need, their business plan. It lets them look at things that are around, what are they gonna do, look at ag literacy. Then, they have to do a financial plan. This always shocks them how much money farming actually costs. So this is a good, I, I, I can see this working very well and shocking them, making them think things. The farm map is part of the final project and then the visual aid. And I looked at, for me, my kids are gonna use Canva because it's easy and it's free for education. So it lets them pick something to promote their business and if you would, you're welcome. I've got, I've got some time if you want to look at this. Um, you can log in using your Google account, but it lets you, when you go to create a design, this is something that they are gonna love. They can create an Instagram ad. So they can go in, they can create this ad and then share it with me. So it makes it, that's something from their world that can meet with the agriculture world and something they're going to care about. So this, my daughter created this, it's her Sid sweet corn. She was playing with it. Um, if you design one, if you go in and decide to design one, please share it with me. I'll put them all in a slide presentation and put it in our Google Drive so you'll have that because examples are always good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on this slide, I've put some of the things that I use almost all the time when I go to pull things. Um, Journey 2050 is huge in my class. My kids beg to play this game. They will, they want to come in and play. They, and that's big for six years to come in. Um, it's not a lower level game. It's, it's pretty much, they need to be sixth grade and up to understand. But it talks about how we're going to sustainably feed 10 billion people by the year 2050. They can play this game on their device. They can play this game on a Chromebook. It, it works amazingly anywhere. They love watching this population clock that, that shocks them. And they start thinking about how things are going to be. And 2050 is in their lifetime. So they really start looking, but they love, love this game. And we download it on the iPads. They, some of them will take it farther. There's a Farmers 2050 they can play from home. And it links to the teacher. So once the teacher signs up, you get a code and they can type that code in and you get information on how they're playing. So it, they're accountable for what they're doing while they're on this site. We're kind of slow here. But this is definitely something you can try from your phone. It's, it's, oh, here it comes. They, 
I have been in, just amazes me the kids that want to play. So they just type in teacher code in their name and they want to use nicknames, but I tell them I have to know who it is. So that's, I can take a break on that if I choose, which is so. Okay, and then purple plow is where we pull our STEM challenges from. My STEM ag class had to do the project from this last year and they struggled. It was hard. They had to think through. They are great at doing exactly what they're told. It is really hard for them to think outside the box and that's what this requires them to do. And they have a new challenge twice a year. One just finished or it's just finishing. Um, but it gives them, and you can go back and pull them to use them whenever, but they can win prizes with this. And that's a huge motivator. But they have these great puzzles. They research. You can pull the whole lesson. It gives the, the book for them to work with as well. It really, really takes it a step farther, especially for those upper level grades. Discovered dairy is something I found last year, and I initially thought it was probably too low level. Um, adopting a cow seemed kind of weird for sixth graders, but they were invested from day one. The, it came in the mail, they had their cow, they knew what they knew where Apple Bar's farm was. They, they sent a pack of some amazing things. We had, they sent us a cow, which didn't look like our apple bar. We got an adoption certificate. We had a cow. It came with a ton of lessons. It, it has a book that they could color, some on-level literature, which was great. Um, so this is, and they start, you can register for this August 1st. So I would be watching for that. I've got it on my calendar make sure we get in but it has in middle school they have lots of lessons it's a it's simple and it's free which is always good and then this link here is going to take you to a lot of games and i don't let my kids just play games on the computer just to play games but they know where this link is and they go to this a lot if they get free time before I ever let them play this, they have to do a game review and I send them, they all have a paper in Google Docs and they have to review the games and tell me which games they think. And it goes through how hard the game is. Would this be a game you could play more than once? And they go through and review this and then they share it with each other and they can see which games they think are the best. They like My American Farm. They will play Journey 2050 almost every time. So, okay, and getting close to the end and um, going fast. So I want you to have some time to explore the website and look at the lessons. Maybe you could find one you could use or modify. Um, and if you can share those, that would be great. And I've included the link so that you get this. But if you go to the website, and click on lessons, you can search lots of ways. You can search by the lesson title, the topic, the grade level. You can search, some of the lessons are in Spanish. It, it's just amazing what you can find here. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of time. I'm going to interrupt you for just a minute. We had a question. The okay. August 1st date that you talked about, um, there was a little confusion over what exactly that registration was for. Could you clarify that? Yes, um, on Discover Dairy, they have an the adopt cow program, and they you have to register for a cow, and they will send it. It comes, I think, about the middle of September, but they send you a whole tub. It's got your your information on your cow. It tells you exactly where. Then you spend time throughout the year. They'll send you a link, and they do where like a walk through. You check in on your cow, and so at the end, we were supposed to do a Google Meet where we could talk to the farmers, but obviously the COVID got right in the middle of that and we didn't get to do that this year. But the registration is just discoverdairy.com and click register now and you'll get, and it's an adopt a cow. 
That's so cool. I was looking on the website. Um, so it's just you fill out the information and they just automatically send you all that stuff? They do. It's amazing. I, I, that is so cool. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Well, I'm basically at the point of finishing. want to make sure we tell Melody happy birthday before we go. Um, and if you need to contact me anytime or you think of something or I missed something because I went super fast, um, trying to learn to slow down, but I haven't got that yet. That was not necessary, Dusty, <laughs> but thank you so much. Welcome. Dusty mentioned a few things on our website. And one of the things that she mentioned was our uh, bovine over steps boundaries lesson. And I'm pulling that up right now. This is new. We work all the time on trying to update lessons. Um, this one, I've just got it uh, completely um, worked over. We had one of our teachers helped us with that. I want to show you the new look for our lessons. So um, there's a few on our website already that have this look to them but um, we're trying to add more all the time. So for the bovine oversteps boundaries, we have taken a, a new spin on an old lesson and revised it. And I think that you're gonna find everything in here that um, was important before and also some new additions. So we've added some new website links um, for you to be able to find some actual newspaper articles uh, from when, um, when Grady was actually stuck in the silo, and then also from the anniversary celebrations because they've been celebrating uh, this historic event. It put Yukon on the map. So those are added to the lesson. Um, we've changed up how the lessons are going to look with the addition of the standards. And so we no longer just are going to have the numbers on them, but also the terminology for the standards so that uh, Either way, you can find the standards that are included for the activity. So for this first one, it is um, going to have the students write their own headline and news story about Grady being stuck in the silos. So the standards that are listed go along with that, the materials that they'll need, and then um, the activity guidelines for you. Some of our lessons are going to have extension ideas as well and then the newspaper story um, to follow. So just like the old lesson had, it just has a little bit more details in it to hopefully help you and your students. And then um, they're going to come up with three options for headlines. You could have them uh, include their favorite or circle their favorite, but three different headline options and then an area for them to write their newspaper story being sure to include the main points and supporting details from what they read. So this is a good way for them to practice writing without plagiarizing, without just copying and pasting what they've read, but making it their own. Um, another activity that we've added for this one, we've added a few more pictures. In the past, we just had the picture of Grady stuck in the silo, and these are actual photos of Grady, by the way. Uh, but for this lesson, we've added two more. So this is um, the farmer, Bill, and his Grady, um, when she was stuck, that's a picture that was included in the newspapers. And then also Grady, when she was released, they had a big parade for her. So um, this is just one of the lesson updates that will be coming to the um, website soon. So I'm going to stop sharing. And Emily and Melody, if you guys want to join me, we can um, answer any questions that they might have about Ag in the Classroom or about the website. I think we have some new people on in this session that uh, need to hear about our new Careeropoly game. And so since they are mainly middle school teachers, and so we do have a, we have the old game, the specialty Cropopoly Monopoly game, and we have that for the older kids, and then we have the junior, but we created a new Monopoly game, and I say we, but Audrey and Emily, and <laughs> I didn't do very much on that uh, project. But we have this new game about careers, and so on the board there are 27 uh, spaces and as we know there are many more careers in agriculture than 27 but we tried to highlight some good um, careers in lots of different fields because we want kids to know that 
um, a career in agriculture is not just being a farmer. There are so many other options, whether they like um, chemistry or they um, like engineering, just so many options for them to choose from. And so we are excited. And since you um, attended this session, we'll be contacting you when that game is ready and we will send you one if you want one. Are um, we made, I believe, six total readers. Uh, these were actually developed for a library conference, but can easily be used in the classroom. Basically, they just go along with books. Um, so this one goes along with the Thinking and Pictures book, which Dusty mentioned that our principal came in and read to the class. So this is a great one, no matter what the age. Um, if you don't know anything about Temple Grandin, she was autistic. Um, and this was way back in the 60s when people didn't know what autism was and anyway her story is really really interesting but she is awesome um she's made a lot of huge changes in the animal industry and in the cattle industry um in fact anyway it's just a great talks about cattle flight zone but there's several things in this reader that are really awesome we would say it's very middle school appropriate um and just gives a lot of great information about Temple Grandin. We also have a technology one that talks about technology and agriculture and, and all the new, um, anyway, technology we have and that farmers use today. GPS on tractors and precision agriculture in general. Um, on the, is it on the back? Uh, we have where we talk about horsepower and kind of the differences when we used to use horses to do agriculture and now the tractors and large equipment that we use today. And then on the inside, I believe it has them compare um, plows, advancements, yes, in plows. And then it also has some math problems on the right hand side. So it's a wide variety of things that they can do with the reader. And um, this one has to do, is it just called John Deere? What's the full title of that book? John Deere, that's who Okay, got it. I couldn't remember the last part of it. But that's one example of a book this could go along with. But of course, several different um, options. Maybe Melody could talk about the symbols too. I think no matter what age, anyway, it's always helpful to, anyway, I love that new resource, brand new resource that we have. Yes, um, um, real quick before she does, um, Emily mentioned that we have six readers, so I only pulled up the ones that are um, specifically middle school, but there's two or three more that I think could work very well for middle school, so be sure to check those out. You can see all of them on the website. Uh, we just wanted to preview today. Okay, so Audrey has the uh, red dirt symbols pulled up, and it's one of our brand new resources. I'm super excited about it. Uh, if you don't know, Oklahoma has a state symbol for many, many things. Uh, we have a state meal, a state flower, a state uh, rock, state soil, and many of, uh, many of the symbols have a tie to agriculture. We have a state insect. You can see the whole table of contents right here. And so we thought it would be fun to put this resource together. And every page does not have a QR code but many of the uh, pages have a QR code. We have about 12 videos that are linked to those QR codes so students can learn some more information about um, the state symbol. Try to put it uh, full of fun facts. Uh, the milk is actually the state beverage and the state drink. The legislators done two things with milk. It was very confusing to put a date on that, so it's worth having your kids investigate that if you uh, want to, to look into that. Uh, our state fruit and vegetable. And then we have some uh, pages in the center. Some of them might be a little too elementary for your kids, but some of them might not be. Maybe you could adapt them. There is a fun coloring page. Um, if you find a career connection, Audrey, would you stop there? Gonna unmute myself. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let me go and back also, up. Everyone can use that. Create your own symbol. That'd be a great one. Come up with a new state symbol. There are several that I've thought of that have to do with agriculture that you could, uh, maybe you want to be the person that works with 
uh, the representatives and senators and gets your class to create a new uh, state symbol uh, for us. I think that'd be a fun project. And so while Audrey's scrolling, oh, well, that one's a pretty fun one too. The, uh, the, it has a text message where they send a text message where they do the uh, main idea in a text message, a little summary. We thought that was a fun um, idea that kids would like, something new and different, modern. Uh, but the career connection, we every page doesn't have one, but we did add a career connection to several pages. Right here, there are a couple. And so um, based on the state symbol, there's a career that goes with that. And so even for third graders, it's not too young to begin uh, talking about what a, what career that they might want to have and showing them lots of connections to agriculture based on your interest. And so um, we hope that you guys will like that. And even if you don't teach third grade, you can use it with your students and love to see how, uh, how other grade teachers uh, use that with their students. Okay, and I'm seeing some questions coming in on the chat. So um, let me look at them, make sure we're answering them for you. Uh, are these pages, are these on the Ag in the Classroom page? Yes, so let me stop sharing and go to the website and I will show you um, where to find them on our website. Okay, can you see my Yes. Okay. We I, switched, I switched what part I was sharing. So let me make sure I'm in the right part. Okay. So on our website under resources and you can go to classroom resources. And it's thinking. So all of our resources have a preview here. You can request the resources. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in, in uh, case you click it just to give you an idea of what you'll be doing. It's really simple. Um, just put in your mailing address. Make sure it's not a P.O. box because we cannot ship large packages um, to P.O. boxes and most of the time these end up being um, pretty heavy. So here's the previews, just the page um, cover front so you can make sure that what you're requesting is what you want. When you're back on the website though, you can click to preview them. So for instance, um, the red dirt symbols, I just clicked right here on the red dirt symbols to take you to what I was showing you. We also have the red dirt groundbreakers. That's a great resource I can show you in just a second. We've added um, our bookmarks. So these have fun facts on them. They don't load very quickly and I apologize. I did not think to pull them up ahead of time. Something for middle school students that I know that they love is ag cahoots. So we have the Ag Cahoots. These are individual challenges. So your students could get on if we are back in the uh, virtual learning world where they're not in class with you. They can get on and they could play this by themselves. If you have them in class, then these are the traditional Kahoot games where you are um, playing the Kahoot and showing it on the board and they're answering the questions. So we have a variety of Kahoot games that are ready to go and set up for you that go along with our lessons. And you can see there are a lot of Kahoot games on here. Students love them. I think the best part about the Kahoot game is um, whenever you download their, um, their game information. So it's a great assessment tool and the kids don't even realize that they're being assessed. It's just fun for them to play. But if you have them using the same name, then you can um, look at their progress. So you could use it before you teach and then again after you teach to show growth and to show progress. And that works with any of the Kahoot games, but especially with ours, I want to point that out. Um, it's not just something fun or, or um, an add-on or a waste of time. It's something that you can use for an educational purpose and you can justify it with your administration. So you can show growth for your students um, based on what they did before and then you teach the eye in the classroom lesson and then play it again at the end to show that growth. So that's one of my favorite parts of the Kahoot. We do not have any Kahoots yet for the red dirt symbols, but those will be coming soon. We'll make some of those soon. Yes, and they do have, Melody did include the QR codes for the video links for that book. So that's another great, uh, great thing to have on there. 